Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Uh, if you would like to submit a question to be considered for this, please send it to askdave at arrl.org. You can include diagrams, pictures, whatever you'd like to make sure that it's understandable. In fact, why don't you just throw in a picture of your station and we'll share that with everybody. Okay, this question comes from Aldo, W2AGC. Um, he says, I have a 40 meter off center fed dipole. That's just like the one on the reference station, which operates on 40 meters, 20 meters, also 10 and 6. Um, he says it's worked well for several years. Very recently, the Visoir has risen on 40 and 20. I took a wide band sweep, which you can see here. The top one was taken six months ago, the bottom one today. Now, I went and looked up his sweeps. Locally, we have had some ice storms, but the antenna looks clear. What do you suppose is going on? And he includes his uh, sweeps. Uh, let's see, they go this way. Here. And we'll just look at them. He sent them along. We'll take a look at them. Okay, these look like uh, an electrocardiogram here. This is taken probably with a uh, nano VNA using the software that works on the computer. Now, you'll note that his 60 meters is pretty bad. Right here. That's three. But he's down to about one point. 240. Uh, not so good on 10 meters. Uh, here's 20, and he's under 2 to 1 across the band. Now on 15, this is really lousy. Okay, uh, and up in the upper part of the 10 meter band, it's okay, and you could operate down here. So you've got 40, 20, 10, and maybe 6. So this very well could be the MFJ 2010, which is a wonderful wire antenna. I have one myself. And this is what has happened to him down here. Things have gone fluey. Okay, the tuning has changed and so on. Why? Okay, so things don't change without a reason. Uh, when you have a sudden change like this, you take a look. Uh, usually there's one thing wrong, like one connector pulled loose or a one short somewhere like that. This is unlike the first time you put up the antenna where you have no idea what might be going on. It could be any of 30 or 40 things. In this case, when something changes, look for the one thing that changed. Now, you've got um, a uh, antenna that I think you should bring down and check the uh, ballon box. In that ballon box, a little plastic box, which is meant to hang in a certain direction, but doesn't always, there it is a current ballon, okay? So there's a couple uh, toroids in there for the current ballon. And then there's a one-to-one uh, -one true ballon, balanced to unbalanced. It's from the unbalanced coax to the balanced feed into the current ballon that will get it up to a four-to-one uh, ratio in there and about 200 ohms, which is where that thing connects. Now, what can go wrong in there? First of all, that antenna is not designed to handle any significant amount of power. So some things that could uh, cause a problem are high winds, very high winds, um, can cause that to create a voltage there. Uh, but more likely there was a nearby lightning event or something like that. Or it could be as simple as this thing's been sitting and wiggling in the wind 
and it's broken something in there. So you need to take it down, check for continuity on all the coils and things like that. Then check your coax. Make sure that your coax cable has not pulled apart, which it can do if it's covered with ice. If you have crimped cables, you would not believe how easy it is actually to pull the thing hard enough so that it doesn't make proper contact anymore. One thing you can do while you have somebody else observing the SWR in your shack is to wiggle things. Wiggle a connector, wiggle the antenna, wiggle stuff going in and out of the ballon, on all that kind of stuff like that. And if the person inside sees the SWR jumping up and down, you know you got a problem. Um, you want, might want to do that on about 5 watts if you've got a 100 watt radio here so you don't suddenly put a bad load on it. Check inside your house, see if the kids have tripped over the cable. Um, check your antenna to make sure everything's uh, copacetic, okay? Yet, usually when something changes all at once, it's because of a single change. So you're looking for one problem. You want to find that one problem, fix it, and see if maybe it's two problems, but we'll see. So I wish you the best in your uh, antenna uh, problem hunting. Remember that favorite word of mine in all things ham radio, persevere. Don't give up on that antenna till you figure out what happened. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, I really do think that something broke at some point or came loose or something like that. Uh, check your insulators to make sure they're not dirty and arcing across. So, there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, we have a Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash ke0og. And if you'd like to see a nice reference station for HF that includes a recommendation for this very antenna, take a look at dcastler.com slash reference. If you would like to learn about uh, an antenna that you can build yourself that actually covers uh, a couple more bands than the reference station, take a look at the NFED Halfwave at the ARRL store. It's a kit you can put together. And I don't get any money for saying any of this. I don't get a kickback from MFJ. I don't get a kickback from the league, although the league does pay me to write the Ask Dave column in QST. And that's one of the ways I may answer your question. So, please click subscribe, like, click the bell, do all those fun YouTube things, and please, if you find a video you really like, share it with your friends. Ask them what they think of it. And until we next meet, 73.